Good morning, my Florida Garden Escape channel. Um, welcome back. If you're new here, we're happy to have you. Um, please forgive my mess of a hair. I just woke up not even that long ago. I had got kids off to summer camp. Um, so it's been a hectic Monday morning here. Um, but today we are going to discuss transplanting. And we're going to go over several tips um, that correspond with transplanting. Um, and that's kind of going to be our discussion of the day. Um, but before we do get into it, go ahead and leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If you are, you are amazing and we love you. Um, and don't forget to hit that bell so that way you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Um, we're always uploading new stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into transplanting. So I'm just going to use my sweet pepper as an example. Um, when you go to transplant your plants, you never want to go past the rim of your pot or your solo cup, whatever you're using to get put your seedlings in until they're ready to go into the ground. Now, you never want to go past this. You can go a little further, especially if you have like a tomato. Um, if, if I had a tomato in a solo cup, I'd show you. Um, but tomato plants, the deeper you put the stem, the more the roots it's going to have in um, the ground. So I always put my tomato plants past the two leaves that it first has at the bottom. So I always do it past that. Now with our bell pepper plant, they have um, notches here. And I'll just go right here below that notch. Um, so that way it's got good root coverage. Because down below this notch, roots will grow if it's touching soil on that. Um, so that's going to be the, how deep you'll want to make your hole for your plant, depending on what you're growing. Now, let's say it is a cucumber plant. Cucumber plant, you definitely don't want to go no further than the broom um, because they're already, they won't develop more roots up their stem. So you'll just want to do it at the base of the plant. Now, let's go ahead and go into tip number two. How do you know when your plant is ready to be transplanted into a bigger pot or into your ground? Well, there's a few things. With, for example, I don't, I don't even know what this is. This came from an I don't know bag of seeds where my seeds had kind of went all over the place. I kind of did a whole full story on it in my previous video. I'll leave a, a link uh, for it in the description below. But anyways, back to... so. With like a plant like whatever this is, if you look at the bottom here, you'll start to see little roots. You see those right there? Those are roots. So that's going to be an indication that this plant is getting close to being root bounded and it is ready to be transplanted into bigger soil. Now let's say you have a cucumber plant, for example, and I have one right here just, just to show you guys it once again. So let's say you have a cucumber plant. With cucumber plants, you won't really see the roots at the bottom. You'll, you'll see those once you go to transplant it. But here's the thing. With the cucumber, once you see its first little, like, cubicle thing, it's not a cubicle, but it's like, um, it's gripper things, the things, the little things that, you know what I'm trying to say. The little things that they use to climb on to help hold them up when they're trellising. You know those things. Anyways, so those are going to be your indications that the cucumber plant or the cantaloupe, um, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be ready to be transplanted. Because those cubicles are reaching out for something for them to grab onto to hold that cucumber plant up to climb up on. So those are going to be your two indications on how to know when to transplant. We're pretty much discussing how to know where to place your plant. Well, a lot of plants, especially our summer crops, they require full sun. Well, here's the thing. When they say full sun, sometimes, especially with tomato plants, um, Full sun does not actually mean 12 hours or 9 hours of full, full sun. So, 
if you're and this is this is only why this is the only reason why I say that. So let's say if you're here in the state of Florida, we are zone eight B. Um, our our uh, temperatures they can get up to ninety anywhere between ninety and hundred degrees. Now with those hot temperatures, you're not gonna want, for example, a bell pepper plant in full sun. So like for example, your bell pepper and your tomatoes. As, as long as they get six to seven hours of sunlight, they're doing great. Now with your bell pepper plants, you're gonna want something to shade them in the evening times from that burning hot sun because it can really fry the peppers and the pepper plant. So want that partial shade in that evening time. Now, let's say you're growing a sunflower. Sunflowers, they love sun they love to be in that full sun so if they're in full sun all day long that's not no problem they can handle that heat they can handle that full full sun now let's say you're growing an apple tree or something like that yes those are going to need your full sun your trees are always going to need that full sun because they are using a lot of that energy now, unlike our tomatoes and our eggplants and our squashes, you always want them to get that six to eight, uh, six to seven hours of sun. But if they're getting partial shade through in the evening time when it's super hot, that's what you're gonna want because they're not being fried by that sun. So, like for instance, my tomatoes that you've guys seen um, in our previous videos from harvesting and things like that. They get a lot of sun in the morning times and afternoon times, but when it comes to evening times, they start to get that shade, which is allows them to stay cooler and not so hot when we're extrusionating hot. Now, one thing for sure in here in our Florida zone, AB, um, our hot is like a humid hot. It's like, oh, it's, it's terrible. I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if you live in the state of Florida. We get hot, especially if it's going to rain, it gets like a humid hot, so it's just like unbearable almost. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. When, they, when a seed package says full sun, you'll want that six to seven hours of sunlight, but you'll also want it to get some shade in case it gets up to like the 100 degree marker. Now let's say you're growing herbs. Herbs like the sun, yes, but one thing with herbs is they can't handle so much of the heat. So if you're getting up to 90 degrees in heat, you'll want them to see some shade so that way they're staying cool and they're not being fried up by that heat. Let's go ahead and move to feeding your transplant. So you can add fertilizer into the ground um, to your seedling. Um, and it'll it'll do good it'll help boost it up um, with fertilizing I wouldn't say do it every week maybe of every other week depending on how much fertilizer you're using we'll do a whole separate video going over fertilizers as well but if you're transplanting you can add some fertilizers or you can even add micro boosts or vermiculite to your seedlings when you transplant them to help boost those roots out to the new ground and that's just some ways you can increment um, what I do is I add a little bit of compost to the ground that our seedlings are going into so that way they have something to feed on let's talk pesticides for when you transplant you can go ahead and automatically apply pesticides to your seedling that you've just transplanted. You don't have to wait for it to get a little bigger because you're going to want to keep that keep that seedling protected through the bugs and things like that. So you definitely always want a good guard. Now if you're growing, I wish I had a tomato in here with me to show you guys. Now if you're growing tomatoes, you can take uncoated aspirin and I'm not I gotta look at the uh, mixtures again I don't have it right off the top of my head but if you take uncoated aspirin and mix it break it up and mix it into a gallon of water and spray it 
on put it on your tomato plants you're helping your tomato plants boost an immune system to diseases and pests and it also helps strengthen those those tomato plants roots now let's move to tip number six so now for our number tip six what I always always say mulch those seedlings mulch it good that mulch is going to hold in that that moisture in that soil so let's say for example you have a cucumber plant I have it right here beside me <laughs> so let's say you have your cucumber plant and you're watering it cucumbers are majority water but if their soil is drying out a lot, they're going to droop down a lot and eventually die because they don't like their soil to stay dry. You don't want to use too much water either because you can root rot your plants. So you only want to apply a few, two, two to three inches of water to your plants, um, depending on your the variety of plant you have. Each plant requires a different level of water. But with your cucumbers, you definitely want to make sure their soil is staying moist. Now, you don't want it to stay too moist where the, the roots are rotting. Um, so, only do so much. Now, if you're using mulch around your plants, that's great. You don't have to water every day. If you do a deep watering um, one day, the next day you won't need to water because that soil should still be wet because that mulch is holding in that moisture. Now, you can go through every few days and add a light watering. That'll help the soil stay moist. But, I wouldn't suggest doing a deep, deep uh, watering every day because you can root rot your roots and you don't want that because that'll kill the plant altogether. Now, let's move to tip number seven. For tip number seven, this is going to really be if you're propagating plants. So with propagating, well, I don't even think I'm using the correct term. I think I could be wrong. I've, I haven't had enough coffee yet. Um, but if, let's say, you're propagating or taking cuttings and rejuvenating cuttings from your tomato plants, for example, to know how they are ready, you'll keep them in a cup of water for a couple of days, and then you'll notice here how the stem is really pushed out those roots and as many you want a lot of roots before you put it in the ground so once it establishes all those roots and i'm trying to get this guy out of here if he would come out there he goes so see how all those roots are those are ready it's ready to go in the ground so that's what we're going to be doing today is putting these guys in the ground now if you're doing this and you happen to see and I'm going to show you a great example. If you happen to see a guy like this, where the stem's just mushy, there's no, no roots whatsoever, go ahead and take this guy out and throw him out because he's not going to push out any roots. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, so this is going to be the last and final step that I have for you guys. Well, not last and final step, but last and final tip that I have for you guys for transplanting is... For example, if you're growing tomatoes or a bell pepper and you're trellising them to go up, one tip I definitely do recommend is going ahead and staking that plant or putting that tomato cage around that bell pepper, however you're doing your plants. Go ahead and put that stake or that trellising method in. So that way you're not causing any root damage to the plant later on when it's ready to, when it needs that help to go up, to trellis up. Now, with our tomato plants, we'll go ahead and put them in the ground and then put the stake in and kind of let it grow. And then as it grows, we're going to start tying it to that stake to help keep it growing up. Um... And that's just one definitely thing I do uh, advise doing. So that way you're not causing any root damage to your plant. But that, And I also want to throw this out here too, guys. Just because a plant dies or because you failed at growing something 
doesn't mean you don't have that green thumb. It's a learning curve. Growing is a, always has those learning curves. So you're always learning new things. So just because something happens in error, it doesn't matter. It's okay. You can redo it. It'll Yes, you put a lot of time and effort into that plant and it died on you, but it is okay. hope you find this video um, useful and you're able to use some of these tips into your own garden. Um, I always try and make sure I, I inform you guys of all kinds of information with gardening because I, as just as much as I want to be successful in my own garden, I want you guys to be successful in your garden as well. So... Do me a favor guys, leave a like down below and comment down below the tip that you found most useful to you or found that you didn't know about doing during your transplanting. Um, I always want to make sure, no, it's always great to know that you guys are getting something out of our videos. Um, I want y'all to be successful in your garden just like I want to be successful in my garden. And growing in a garden, it saves money, it, it's, it saves you on therapy, because <laughs> growing, growing is my therapy, and a lot of people might find that the same thing, gardening is therapy. Um, but until next time, my Florida Gardening Skate channel, I wish you all the best, you all are amazing, and until next time, deuces.